Why are you bullish? Take it away. All right. How can you not be bullish? Here's why I'm bullish. Number one, Bitcoin is commoditized energy in the form of money. What do I mean by that? Historically, to sell energy, you need demand and you need infrastructure, right? Infrastructure is very expensive. Uh, and that's why you see places like El Salvador where they can produce cheap energy. Why didn't they harness that volcano energy before? Well, because they didn't have the demand. They didn't have the infrastructure and demand to sell it. Now, anybody in the world can harness electricity, commoditize that electricity in the form of money through Bitcoin. And then what's the limitation? What's the limitation to that? There is no limitation. You're freeing yourself from the bank. You don't need a loan from the bank to figure out how you're going to get money. You can literally capture electricity and turn it into money and sell it back to the marketplace. So that's the first reason I'm bullish because a lot of people say, well, Bitcoin's not backed by anything. Bitcoin, there's no intrinsic value. I disagree completely. Bitcoin's backed by its cost of production. As a miner, I know that it costs right now for me. Now I'm a smaller operation and I'm paying a little bit higher price per kilowatt per hour. But for me, it costs around $18,000 to produce a Bitcoin. Right. So if I can produce one for 18 and sell it back to the market for 23, I'm pretty happy with that. But there's no way in the world I can produce a Bitcoin for 30,000 and sell it back for 23. I'm going to go out of business. That's producer economics. This is business 101. You can't produce something and then sell it for less than it costs you to produce. So that cost of production creates a fair value for Bitcoin. That's not to say that Bitcoin has to trade at that fair value. It's just to say for people who are producing Bitcoin, we need to pay attention to that fair value because when that fair price goes below fair value, we got to be managing our treasury in the right way or else we're going to go out of business. And also when Bitcoin is trading at a premium to that fair value because of the added demand, we need to know that we need to capture that profit so that we can properly survive into the future and produce that hash rate. So those producer economics that are behind Bitcoin and support Bitcoin and the fair value of Bitcoin, that's the first reason why I'm bullish. The second reason why I'm bullish is because of what I said earlier, we are watching Bitcoin transform from digital gold to digital collateral. And the gold market is a $12 trillion store of value market. But the collateral market is a multi hundred trillion dollar marketplace. I'm talking about government debt in the form of treasuries, notes, bills, bonds, the whole deal. All of those things right now back our entire system. And it's a debt based backing. Bitcoin is the equity based backing. But here's the kicker. It's in the Internet economy. OK, so in the Internet economy, what happens is there's no group of people to tell you the price of money. If people if a, if a government or somebody tries to tell me the price of eggs or chicken or bacon, we would say, what are you talking about? Let the free market discover the price. It's a supply demand price equilibrium. You're not going to tell me what the price is. Well, why is it OK for them to tell us the price of money? Everywhere in the world, they try to tell you the price of money, except in the Internet economy. In the Internet economy, we have free market interest rates because of Bitcoin. Now, nothing can compete with Bitcoin. I'm Bitcoin maxi. If something says they're trying to compete with Bitcoin as hard money and as the reserve asset of the Internet economy, you really just don't know what you're talking about. You know, the Ethereum people, all, all, shit coiners, they don't know what they're talking about. However, when you talk about decentralized finance and you talk about protocols that open up Bitcoin, to new levels of finance, such as being the collateral. So you can borrow against your Bitcoin. You can use Bitcoin to make borrowing against a different asset less risky or to lower the APY. Bitcoin is a financial instrument and it's a free financial instrument in the Internet economy because there's free market interest rates. If the supply of money is high and the demand for loans is low, well, then the interest rates are going to go down. But when the supply of money is low and the demand is high, the interest rates are going to go up. It's the only economy in the world. And by the way, it's an aggregate economy. The United States, China, Russia, Europe, they can't compete with the Internet economy because it's an aggregate of all peoples. So we have a one free market in this world and it's in the Internet economy. And the Internet economy has one reserve asset and that asset is Bitcoin. And nothing will ever be able to compete with it because the Bitcoin network is a quantum computer. You hear people talk about quantum computers all the time. Bitcoin is a quantum computer. Why? Because there is no one entity or even team of entities that can create enough hash power to attack Bitcoin. It's beyond the point of return. And uh, that secures the network. And it's that security that we want to apply to our transactions, right? We want to be able to borrow and know that we're not going to have that money taken back from us. We want to be able to repay a loan and know that it's secured. That transaction finality that's secured by Bitcoin network, along with those free market interest rates, makes Bitcoin 
the apex predator of all assets. And that's the real reason that money is flowing into this industry. Yeah, there's a lot of people learning about it. Maybe they put in one or two percent. But I believe for the people I talk to, people, some people who have hundred million dollar plus net worth, their real question is, you know what? I've kept my money in treasuries for the longest time. But now I'm starting to see with inflation going the way it is, I can't protect my purchasing power. Yeah, there's no credit risk. And I know for a fact the government can print that money and pay it to me. But when I get that money, I don't know what I'm going to be able to buy. You know, someone who bought a bond, a two-year note in 2020, and they thought they said, oh, you know, I'm going to buy a million dollars worth of this two-year note. It's going to yield 1%, 2%. And that's great because when I buy my house in 2022, it's going to, it's like I get my free, uh, what I have to pay the real estate agent is for free. I don't have to pay for their, their shit anymore. I don't have to pay their commissions and stuff because the interest on this bond is going to pay it. Well, that's wrong because that person had a million dollars in 2020 turns around to buy that house in 2022 and it's $1.3 million. So that was not storing your value. That was not a successful, smart move to make. These treasury bonds and notes and bills are not a successful way to store your value through time. Bitcoin, look, it, pre-2020, Bitcoin was around $7,000. In 2020 and through all those years, they expanded the currency supply by 40%. Bitcoin's price is up 300%. So yeah, it went to 70 and came back down to 23 or wherever we're at right now. But it was at 7,000 before they started printing all the money. So all these people are saying Bitcoin is not a successful inflation hedge. Well, hold on. Let's do some math because I'm up 300% since they turned on the printers. And your treasury bond is yielding negative rates because, I mean, if you don't know already, I don't trust the government CPI. The government CPI is not accurate. Real CPI is probably 13%. I think it's safe to say just double it to give you the answer. A lot of a lot of comments would agree with that. Even Peter Schiff, who hates Bitcoin, would agree with that point. Real CPI. Start, so if you're getting 5% and the real inflation is 13%, you're negative 8%. You're losing 8% of purchasing power year over year. You're going to buy 8% smaller house year over year, even though you're saving up. So I think some bigger players within the system who have really not paid that much attention because they have a lot of cash flow, they have old businesses, they're starting to pay attention because they're starting to realize, well, wait a second. You know, we planned this out 10 years ago and we were supposed to build three factories. But now I can only build one factory. What the hell is going on? I thought we had this planned out and this was going to take care of itself and we would be expanding by this point. So what's happening is the realization of the dilution of the collateral, which is the treasuries through all the money printing, is turning people to Bitcoin. And Bitcoin is the answer because it's secured by its energy. And yeah, it can trade at big premiums. I mean, it was at 70,000. It was only costing me around 16,000 to produce a Bitcoin. Since then, the network has grown quite a bit. And because the network grew, difficulty has gone up. As difficulty go goes up, the cost of production goes up. So it squeezes our margins. But just that alone, that Bitcoin is alive. It's, it has its own mechanism for price discovery. Nobody can tell you it's just supply demand. There's producer economics playing a role in securing that value. And then that the role that it's playing is not in the traditional system where I have to trust Citibank and Wells Fargo to custody my Bitcoin. I can be my own bank in a free market internet economy where interest rates are determined by supply and demand and free market principles. Free market economics and incentives are going to win over these centrally planned systems. And it's just a matter of time. And to me, the time is very short because the dollar is at the end of its life cycle. And we know that because of inflation. I used to tell people about inflation in 2015, 2016, and they would look at me sideways, right? And then they finally came back in 2021 and they were like, hey, man, what you were saying about you, you were you were wrong, but you were right because you were just you were just way before your time. And now, you know, people listen. They're like, oh, yeah, I know what inflation is. I see what's going on here. I understand what you're saying. Well, that's the sign because we've been waiting for this sign. A lot of people in this marketplace have been waiting for uncontrollable inflation. We've been waiting for the Fed to have to be forced to use the tools that they have to fight inflation. Well, now they're finally being forced to fight inflation. That's the sign that we're at the end of the currency life cycle. So if you guys are out there and you're on the edge, you need to learn about this stuff. You need to protect your wealth by putting it into Bitcoin and understanding what you own and then having the conviction to hold through these ups and downs because you know where the road ends. Damn, dude. <laughs> you should have seen the, the comment section blowing up. The, so my favorite one, when is CJK going to get passionate? 